Today, I will show you how you can add touchscreen, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to your existing speakers using Moodle Audio and Raspberry Pi. So, let's go! For the DAC, we will be using the Subtronics X400 version 3 and it comes in a cardboard box with the DAC and some screws to attach to the Raspberry Pi. As a Raspberry Pi, I will be using a Raspberry Pi 3A Plus because it has Wi-Fi integrated and it is a little bit faster than a Zero. And of course, we will need a SD card. So there are many alternatives we could use for the duck, like Hyperberry is pretty common. I have one too but I want to use it for some other speakers later on. Links to the hardware will be in the description below. Now, additional hardware you could use is a rotary knob to manually set the volume and a touchscreen. Now, let's assemble. So, now let's take a look at the ports. Here we have wire terminals, left and right RCA connectors, power jack, headphone jack, IR receiver, and last but not least a potentiometer to control the volume. So, now let's install the software for the Raspberry Pi. For this just search Moodle Audio or click on the link in the description down below. Um, Moodle Audio is a distribution for the Raspberry Pi dedicated for music playback. Here you can see it has tons of features and here it's generally really user friendly. But without further ado, click on download and download the cheat. And now flash it with your software of choice. I will be using Balina Etcher or whatever it is called. <laughs> Now let's power up the system. I will be using a 12 volt 5 amp power supply. You should really look at the datasheet of your DAC and choose one which matches the given values. After giving the system some time to boot up, it will open a hotspot called the Moodle Audio. Just connect to it and enter this IP address and it will show you this user interface. Now go to configure and network. Here you can add your Wi-Fi credentials. You can do a scan of the SSID, but I had some problems with that, so I will enter it manually. Now when you've done it, just reboot the system once and you should find it under this address. After the system has rebooted, now go back to the configuration and system. Here you can set your time zone and many different settings. We will go over it very briefly because I think it is pretty much self-explanatory. Let's see the host name. This is the name which will be shown like in your home network, like which you can see in your router. And don't forget to always press the set button after you've changed the setting, because otherwise it will be lost when you press the set button from an, a different setting. Now here, uh, another a little bit interesting is the expand root file system. Let's do this, it will take a little bit of time and you should redo, reboot after it. Here you can set the time when your touch screen or the screen you're using will be set to blank. And sometimes the system just takes a second to update the settings. And I guess that's already everything we have to do in the system tab. 
So now I'll switch over to the audio tab. Here at first let us choose an i2 as audio device. I'm using the X400 DAC and M from Subtronics. So I will be selecting this one and don't forget to press set because it always will lose it otherwise. I would recommend not to restart now, uh, but set the other settings like the rotary encoder, which this DAC already has implemented. And the next setting is the Bluetooth renderer because I'm using the Raspberry Pi C3A Plus. It already has Bluetooth on board. So let's add this and press the set button. And I strongly recommend using the pairing agent because otherwise you have to always and you want to add a device to Muda Audio Bluetooth, you have to activate a pairing process from this Muda side and from your mobile device or Bluetooth device. Also, you can use speaker sharing, but I don't want to use this. If you, if you want to, just toggle the button and press set. Now restart the Bluetooth controller. And here are many more renderer you could enable like AirPlay or Spotify or Squeeze Light if you want to do some fancy multi-room uh, multi audio streaming. But I will be using the DLAN server. So I will activate this and press set so I can use it in Home Assistant. And now that's all, so let's do a quick reboot. So after the reboot, this is optional and you only really need to do this when you want to use a touchscreen or any type of display. You have to go here to local display and enable local UI display. At first, when you touch the touchscreen, there will be an awkward looking screen. But after another quick reboot, you will have this really nice wrongly orientated screen. So now let's connect the speakers. Here is power in and ground in and you have right out and left out. I will link into a diagram down in the description. So after everything is set up, Moodle provides one test track I will select it. So here you can test whether everything is corrected right with left and right channel audio. This is my voice on the left. This is my voice on the right. This is my voice on the right hand side. So everything seems to be working just fine. Therefore I now want to edit to the Bluetooth system, Windows system. Therefore, just go to the settings, press Add Bluetooth, and there it should pop up. Now, I wanted to put everything in a nice enclosure, so I modeled on myself and printed it out. The files will be in the description down below, but on sites like AliExpress, you can find ready-made ones. Now, let's put the system together. First, let's add the rotary knob. Be sure to put the rotary encoder all the way to the left and now line up the yeah, line and press really hard. When it sits on there, just put it in an enclosure, close the thing and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful. See you in the next one.